Okay, well here it is. It's a Tiny Tim generate inset, which would have been mounted inside a tank and was used uh, in the mornings after running the radios all night, was used to charge up the batteries to start the tank's engine. So yeah, that's where this has come from. So it probably hasn't seen a lot of use at all and uh, it makes absolutely no rattles at all, no noises, absolutely nothing, just absolutely nothing. But it also doesn't have any compression at the moment. Uh, we have just managed to get a spark from it. It has the um, ignition coil on the side here, car coil. Uh, I'm not sure if... I've seen some of these with an ignition coil under here, under this cover. I'm not sure if this one ever had one. It might have, but it certainly doesn't have it anymore. But I see this a lot on them, a car coil on the side. Almost all the ones that I've seen have the car coil, so that's no big deal. We've uh, removed this cover, which uh, I thought would be a little bit of a nightmare because you need to remove this pulley for a starter rope. But thankfully, the nut came off just fine. And find the key there it is the nut came off fine and that pulley just literally wiggled off so uh, no big problems there the points were extremely dirty and after cleaning those and removing this switch we just cut the wires to it for now but i think that could well be the original switch out of the tank unfortunately it's missing its front cover but we might be able to uh, reuse that again in the display we spliced the wires together here, got 12 volt to the coil, and uh, sure enough she sparked. She turns over nicely. I've had a couple of little puffs out the, well, what's left of the exhaust. There ain't much of that left. It takes a really small thread that, so that's going to be hard to find an exhaust for it. But yeah, nonetheless, it's decent. It looks good. Definitely definitely be a running engine. Uh, I think we've still got, by the looks of it, the original tank's fuel line. That would have gone to the main tank. Oh yeah, we definitely, that's definitely the original fuel line out of the tank, so I highly doubt this has done much running since it was removed. Looks like somebody's had a go at doing some rewiring here on the switches and the coil's got a new bit of HT lead at some point. But other than that, it doesn't look like it's really been touched, so I doubt it's done any more than, say, a couple of hours of runtime since it's been removed from the tank. And I doubt it done much runtime when it was in the tank, so yeah. Apparently these could charge a flat battery in about 10 minutes to a point where it would start an engine. So yeah, that's pretty good going. I mean, everything just suggests that there's not a great deal of wear. I don't know though, it might have done a fair bit of runtime, but it's certainly been well looked after. It sure has. I think it goes up to about something like, I'm not sure of the voltage on it, probably a maximum of 12 volt, maybe 24 volt, but it does uh, charge up to 30 amps. So it's pretty, pretty beefy. You think about what your ordinary car charger, about eight, about eight odd amps. So yeah, you think you're putting 30 amps into a battery, it's not going to take all that long to charge it. So I'm looking forward to getting this going and charging a couple of flat batteries up with it in no time. Certainly be a lot better than having the car charger on for like 12 hours. Yeah, should be good. We've got some interesting going on here. It looks like it's had a another condenser put in, but it's literally just been installed here and then put onto the positive terminal. And I'm not sure what that's all about. So I removed that, but I've got a spark, so I have absolutely no clue what that's there for. Uh, I do have a little bit of sparking at the points, so it definitely needs a new condenser, but that's no big deal. Uh, we've got this absolutely crazy thing going on down here. I have no idea what that is. I'm guessing that's some sort of regulator for the voltage in and voltage out, I suppose. It looks like it's retained quite a fair bit of original paint, so it should clean up really nicely. I was debating before collecting it whether I was going to paint it or not, but after seeing it now, it definitely looks like a contender for just uh, wiping down 
and put in a clear coat on it like we did with the Briggs. Definitely looks like a contender for that. Everything looks pretty nice. Hmm, that's interesting. It's actually plastic. Anyway, got some original decals on it as well. One for the air filter there. Tells you to service it weekly. Blimey. I wonder why it's in such good nick. Yeah, it does, yeah. Service breather weekly. I should imagine it probably had a decal on it somewhere to tell you to do the same with the oil. And uh, another promising thing about its condition, internally, does lie within this oil bar filter. Nice clean oil in there. Really good. And uh, the old oil bar filter doesn't look like it's got any crud in it at all. So it really does look like it's been well looked after. Obviously they relied on this thing quite a bit when those old batteries went dead. But yeah, that's the latest project. It's definitely going to take some faff in to get it going, clean it up. Well, in saying that, if I could get this cowling off and the head off and grind the valves in, it could probably be a runner today. But I want to strip the whole thing. The barrel comes off, it's all really nicely made. Yeah, not bad at all. It doesn't look like we have a detachable sump though, so... Looks like we we'll have to be doing some cleaning through the small hole that's probably going to be provided by taking the barrel off. Yeah, definitely no detachable sump there. I think the hardest thing is going to be getting the generator off of the engine. That's going to be a bit of a bugger. Also, looks like all these um, threaded pipe fittings here for the carburetor need to come off as well. That's going to be a bit of a nightmare. I bet they're well stuck in there. A little bit of chip out of the cast iron cowling, but again, no big deal. It's actually looking really good. Still got its original spec plate, and that'll actually tell us what voltage it is. Yeah, it is a maximum of 12 volts. Looks like about 300 watts. Let's just clean that up and see see what we got. Obviously, uh, there's not much way of telling, I doubt, if it was actually ever installed in a tank or not. Um, obviously, some of them would have been made for other applications. But I have heard a lot of them were in tanks, so just naturally assuming and hoping that this one was, because it would be cool. But anyway, we've got it's a tiny tin battery charger. It's a model, just a model 24 by the looks of it. Volts 12, watts 300. Serial number is 14446. Yeah. Looks like it's made in Michigan. USA so yeah another American engine to add to the fleet and by god is it heavy you look at that and you think oh that won't weigh very much I mean we've got certainly got bigger engines here but this thing weighs <laughs> I mean uh, I always thought that little BSA battery charger over there was fairly heavy for what it is but this thing is in a whole other league it really is heavy but anyway that's enough for waffling for now. Take some pictures of it, post it on a couple of forums. Hopefully, with the serial number, we might even be able to find out if it was ever actually fitted into a tank. But I hope it was. It would be cool. Yeah. We've even got fairly clean oil in the crankcase, so that's pretty good going. Yeah, she should be in good condition internally. Shouldn't be a problem at all. Both valves are lifting. One of them has probably been on the exhaust stroke, and because it's rot an old exhaust, it's probably uh, corroded the exhaust valve seat a bit. But that shouldn't be a problem either. Once we get that barrel off and get the pins out of there, that's probably holding them on. Yeah, it would be good. Yeah, I think this is going to be a fairly straightforward restoration. 
there shouldn't be any nasties lurking for us in there it's just purely a matter of getting it all to bits cleaning it and reassembling it I'm gonna make a little trolley for this one purely because it is quite heavy so when we are assembling it we're going to be assembling it onto a trolley but yeah it is heavier than it looks trust me <laughs> 